Welcome to another weekend here on the platform. My name is Sam Omashe. A leopard shall watch over your cities. From the biblical book of Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 6. Two major episodes in Yoruba history may place in context the Amotekun imbroglio. One happened in the 19th century and the other in the 1960s. The first was a theater of blood and brawn. The barracks here in Mokola was the 3rd Infantry Battalion, so the northerners were harassing the Yoruba because it was one of the wishes of Ojuku that every soldier should go back to his own state of origin. The Midwesterners should go to the Midwest, and the Yoruba people should stay in Ibadan. The northerners should go to the north so as to accomplish the Aburi Convention requested by Ojuku. So, when every soldier in his own state of origin, Ojuku would be confident to come and have a meeting with General Gowan. They refused to go, and by that time there were threats to Yoruba officers by the House of Fulani. There was a day General Hassan Usman Kasina came to Ibadan to speak to the troops. Then he spoke to us in a bad and undiplomatic way. He said that the House of Fulani soldiers would not leave Ibadan and that if they were threatened, he would use 40 soldiers to defeat the Yoruba. So he boasted and boasted, saying, Give me the green light. I'm going to produce Ojuku himself. He hammered on that. What type of threat to a whole nation by a single man? We looked at ourselves and said we were done for if we didn't do anything or if our leaders didn't do anything. The intimidation by Usman Kasina could be considered an affront to the Yoruba. The other incident happened during the advance of the soldiers of Uthman Danfodio, who wanted to spread its tentacles to Yoruba land. The date of their infamy was 1840, when the Yoruba, led by the fierce Republican Ethios of Ibadan, with an infantry force with men of valor and cunning, entrapped the invading force. They enfeebled foreigners in a night massacre that put paid to any imperial fantasies by the otherwise redoubtable thrusts. The master stroke of an army now suffered a stroke from the indigents. These scenarios were unnecessary. In the first instance, the Yoruba worked with the House of Fulani to win a war of unity. The Yoruba provided the brain of the war, if the north of the footmen. In the second example, the Danfordio army could have retained its myth of the invincible if it had left the West alone. Amotekon is now a state of mind which is more potent than an institution. Unlike the quiescence of General Hassan's insolence, Amotekun is a public spill. No proud race wants to be a bystander and spectator of its own humiliation. Abubakar Malami, as the Attorney General, ought to learn a thing or two about the purpose of law. Amotekun is not and has never been projected as a sovereign force. It is a cooperative entity as part of the federal infrastructure of security. The Southwest governors did not only do a good thing, they performed a worthy feat. To say Amotekun is illegal is to throw the law at vigilantes, or even my Megard, because it implies I have taken my security away from the federal government. In his allegory, our beloved novelist Chukwemekaike told the story of a bottled leopard to show how the beast in us can come from cultural misunderstanding. The Yoruba leopard is not here to grow for a secessionist lamb. Its targets are hoodlums, marauding herdsmen, kidnappers, at all. Rather than bottle the Yoruba leopard, why not sit at table over Fura and Amala? One will help the other travel through. Welcome to Big Talk. My guest uh, today is uh, Professor Ben Mwabweze, uh, a top constitutional scholar and um, public intellectual. You're welcome to this show, sir. Thank you very much. 
we are speaking now 50 years uh, after the Nigerian crisis, which some people call the Nigerian Biafra Civil War or the Nigerian Civil War and, and so on. Um, would you say that the conditions that led to the crisis of that era has been overtaken by contemporary citizens or we are still in the grips of those causes? We are still in the grip of those causes. We haven't learned any lesson from them. Uh, now, I believe that the civil war could have been avoided, yes, if we had not been too obsessed with power. When Ojuku said on Aburi, we stand. We stand. I believe that it's his own fault. What were they? Power. The Jews' fault was power. Power. How so, sir? Power. He wanted power. But when he said that a bully will stand. We are keeping away his propensity, his love for power. What he might have done if a, a body had been granted is another matter. I won't, um, it's not for me to say that. But at least a body offered a platform, what we call now. Uh, restructuring. Aburi offered a platform. I happen to be the main person who drafted the papers with which Ujuku went to Aburi. Yeah. And that we're talking about the restructuring. Yes. Yes. That Yes, it's good that you said that you, you, you drafted the papers because I was, I was going to ask you that question because um, some people thought that there was some kind of error by those on the federal side that they shouldn't have uh, appended their signature to Aburi and, and, and that there were other ways that the agreements could have, could have been worked out. So what were the objections to Aburi? They know. What I were mean, the objections of the federal side, the Gowan and the his, uh, technocrats? Yes. What were their objections to Aburi? Yes, because they felt they considered too much to Juku. Yes. What were those sticking points? The sticking points was about the power of a state. Mm. A region. A region. Yes. To say, no, we won't accept this. This is not our idea about autonomous states. Yes. yes. Let's keep at arm's length what the old idea of uh, the federal government having overriding power over everything. Yes. That was the issue. And Ojuku said no. And Aburi agreed with him. Mm -hmm. Gawan at the meeting accepted this. But when he left the meeting, the Federal Permanent Secretary yes, yes. advised him otherwise. So, the on Aburi will stand became an issue. They didn't want a bully anymore, even though they agreed. Kawan agreed yes. with it at the time. Mm -hmm. But as I said, whether whether Ojuku 
would have, you know, uh, whether, he, advantage. No, whether he would have abided by his acceptance of my body, I don't know. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? You have to explain that, sir. You know, a bully, yes. He, he considered a lot to the state. Mm -hmm. Now, if you had implemented a bully as a Juku insisted, Would he, Ojuku, have been satisfied with that? Once you leave the scene of the meeting, mm. would he have accepted that? If he could be relied upon to stay with Abuji, uh, with Aburi, mm. and not go beyond it, that's all right. Go beyond it to do what? To arrogate more powers to himself. What, what sort of powers? Powers of uh, to powers of government. Yes. Yes. Like part because he had there was an ego problem between both of them, himself and uh, Yakubu Gohan. Yes. He felt he was superior in rank, or he should be superior in rank as the supreme commander. Over Gowan. Did you think that those who said they didn't want Aburi felt like by conceding Aburi they had already created Biafra for Ojuku? Because Ojuku would not want to report to Gowan as a supreme commander. But you leave that to find out what he would have done. Yes. You didn't give him the chance. Mm. On a bully alone, a bully as a bully, would have saved Nigeria. Whether Ojuku would have been satisfied with a bully. I hope I'm making myself clear. Yes, you are saying that it was possible that Ojuku might have exploited that position to have created also tension that probably could have still led to a civil war. Yes, that is possible. Mm. But we didn't give him the opportunity to commit a crime. To commit, yes, to do what <laughs> he wanted, he yes. might have done. Yes. Yes. He was right to say on a bully, we, we stand. Mm. Let us stand on a bully. Okay. Yes. You refuse to stand on a bully mm. be, because you believe that Ojuku would not have stopped mm. with a bully that he might have gone further, you know, that Biafra was already in, in his mind. Yeah. But Aburi did not, Aburi as Aburi did not create Biafra, mm. no. So Ojuku had a point where he said, on Aburi we stand. You condemned him already because you thought that his idea, he was superior, he considered himself superior to Gawan and all that. And he jumped to the conclusion that we, we must not obey Apuri. Apuri. Yes. So it was a crime that was created before it was ever before, done. Yes. <laughs> that is the thing. So in your own interaction with Ujuku, it looks like, like, you had a sense of him as somebody who had the will to power. That is undeniable. That is the truth. So why did you still work with him if you thought he had this uh, tendency to dictatorship? Now, um, why did I still work with him? Is he not an Aburi? Wait. On Aburi, we drafted Aburi. I was the main drafter. We didn't operate, implement Aburi. 
He jumped to a conclusion. You rejected Aburi. So, I asked his father, I had no choice also. You re rejected Aburi and drove uh, Ujuku mm -hmm. into an extreme. What choice is there? To repudiate Ujuku? No. You are the cause of the trouble by re rejecting, by refusing to implement a bully. And that gave Ujuku the opportunity mm. to go the other way. The other way. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so my sense of my reading of the history of that time, because I was a little boy, I didn't really know much about what was going on until I grew up and I read to understand what was I was experiencing when I was a, a little boy, is that it was not Aburi itself or Juku itself or Gowan itself, himself uh, that caused the crisis. It was a sense of distrust in the country that who could have gone through Aburi without problems, would have gone through the issue of the Western region crisis without problem, but or even the issue of um, Decree 34 by Rossi, and even the coup, the suspicion of the of the of the of the majors uh, for creating an ethnically tendential school uh, and so on. That all those things we could have survived if there was no suspicion. Why was there this ingrained suspicion in the politic matter? It's part of the structure of the, of the country. The rivalry, the ethnic rivalry between the North and the South. Even in the South also, you have the rivalry, the suspicion the distrust between the Yorubas, the Igbos, and other ethnic groups in the South. Mm. There was so much distrust. The, what a, the mistake to have amalgamated such a disparity such a diverse collection of ethnic groups into one. So that created a lot of distrust. Nobody was prepared to accept the leadership of the other in fighting. That distrust was what dominated the politics of the time so that a bully oh, abiding by a bully it was only part of the, the issue. A bully was created by that uh, distrust in the country. It was a symptom. Hmm? It was a symptom. It was a symptom. Yes, the, the distrust was so all pervaded. It was so all pervaded. And um, we thought we could contain it by a bully. Whether we would have succeeded, I don't know. But it failed because there's this divergence between those saying on a bully we stand and those saying we do not accept a bully. Yes. And so the opportunity of trying to experiment on a bully was lost. Who is to be blamed? I don't know. Was it Ujuku? Ujuku is not to be blamed until I know what well, Emil said this. Um, if a bully had been implemented, what he would have done 
as I said, nobody can say, given his lust, his propensity for power, mm -hmm. whether he would have stopped with that bully. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. And you don't blame him because you don't give him, you didn't give him, give him the opportunity to the <laughs> yes. So that is where the problem is. That is where the problem is. I listened to Gawan the other day, and I said to myself, those who advised him against implementing Aburi, Played into the hands of Ojuku. They played into the hands of Ojuku. Ojuku could, you know, with a righteous mind, go away and say, that. Ah, I accepted a bully. And I proclaimed that a bully I stand. You didn't give me the opportunity to prove whether one month, one week, after that, I would have gone beyond the bully. Do you think that if Ojuku wanted to exploit um, Aburi, whether the intelligentsia like you, um, Okigbo, Achebe, and so on, would have given him the support? Or do you think it will have rammed its way through? Do you think the masses of of the of the of the eastern region then will have said, okay, let's go? If Ojuku had tried to exploit Aburi. The masses the two groups. The masses were very, very gullible and might have been exploited by Ojuku. Then there is what you call the intelligentsia. Hmm. We had several meetings in my house. Some of the meetings were held in my house. What Where was that? In Anugu. Anugu. Yes. In Anugu. I was in Anugu. Like Professor Ninjako, mm. he was part of the group, mm. intelligentsia, mm. who wanted to stand firmly on Aburi. We knew that giving Aburi, that our leader, Ojuku, might well have gone the other way, the stream. We knew that the masses might have followed him. There's nothing he could do to stop it. But we knew that taking the mood of the time, the masses might have been swept off their feet and follow the extreme of Aburi. Mm. But obviously, at the time when this was happening, a lot of meetings going on. Many of the meetings in my house. A few, a few. Thank you, Sam. Just before the program ends, this is my poem on Leah Sharibu. Tell me, Leah. When was the last time your earlobes trembled from a song or your tongue lilted with lyrics? If and when you hear them, do you tear up or recall those dear ones? Is the song a rhythm of sadness and joy, just like us, or sad to sad, just like yours? Thank you for watching the program today. You can catch up with my published column on www.samomashaye.com. Also follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Sam Omashaye. And until next time, be good. <laughs>